The Pinballs by Betsy Byers. Chapter 6. It was morning and Harvey's legs hurt. He didn't feel like getting out of bed, and so Mrs. Mason sent Carly in with a breakfast tray. I wish somebody would bring me a tray, Carly said as she entered. She set it down on his bedside table. She stood staring down at him. Harvey looked at the tray. It's little crunchies, Carly said. They'll make you big and strong. She looked at him. Although in your case, it's going to take more than little crunchies, if you ask me. I wonder if they make big crunchies. Harvey said nothing. She put one hand on her hip. Whoa, she said. If somebody brought me a breakfast tray, I wouldn't just lie there like a rope. Harvey said nothing. If, some, if somebody brought me a breakfast tray, I'd drop over dead. She waited. Then she said, You don't get anything, do you, Harvey? I ju just gave you the perfect chance to insult me. I just said, If somebody brought me a breakfast tray, I'd drop over dead. Now you should say, Is that a promise? Carly waited. Then she said, I give up. You're hopeless. She started from the room. When you get through eating, if you ever do, call and the slave of the world will come back for your tray. Carly was all the way out of the door when he said, Thank you, Carly. Carly stopped. She stood motionless in the hall for a moment. Then she said, No need to thank slaves. She kept standing there. She felt Harvey had only thanked her to make her feel bad. And he had succeeded. For some reason, insults don't, didn't hurt her. People could insult her all day long and she would insult them right back. But let somebody say something polite or nice to her and it made her feel terrible. Carly looked across at the opposite wall. The phone was there and she walked over slowly. Suddenly, she wanted to make a long-distance call. Not to her mother, she decided. She wanted to call someone like Cher or Rhoda or Mary Tyler Moore. Hi, she would say. This is Carly. Let me tell you the rotten thing that had happened to me. She was staring at the phone, wondering how you could call a star when Mrs. Mason appeared in the doorway. Did you take Harvey his tray? Yeah, but he didn't eat it. Mrs. Mason wiped her hands on her apron. We're going to have to be especially nice to Harvey these next few weeks. To Harvey? Yes, he's having a rough time of it. Well, how about me, Carly said. Why doesn't anybody ever think of being especially nice to me? What do I have to do to get some attention around here? Break both my legs? Now, Carly, would a wrist be enough? Mrs. Mason put her hand on Carly's shoulder. I just have a feeling you can help Harvey. Whoa, are you off base? You're a very strong girl, Carly, whether you know it or not. If Harvey's depending on me for help, he is going to go down the drain. Listen, Carly. No, you listen. Harvey and me and Thomas J are just like pinballs. Somebody put in a dime and pushed a button, and out we came, ready or not, and settled in the same groove. That's all. She looked at Mrs. Mason. Now, you don't see pinballs helping each other, do you? Carly, they can't. They're just things. They hit this bumper, they go over here. They hit that light, they go over there. Carly, and soon, as soon as they get settled, somebody comes along and puts in another dime and off they go again. Carly was standing by the phone. She reached up and dialed zero. I can't help Harvey and I can't help myself. I think you can, Mrs. Mason said. 
Take a good look at a pinball machine sometime, Carly said. You might learn something about life. In his room, Harvey lay without moving. He had heard every word of the conversation. He wished his father had heard it too. You kids today got it so easy, his father was always saying. It was tough when I was a kid. None of this $5 here and $10 there. Harvey, who asked for money only when he needed it for food, always waited in silence. His father would rave some more about how easy Harvey had it, and then he would pull some bills from his pocket. He would toss them at Har Harvey, so Harvey would have to pick them up from the floor. Then Harvey's father always ended with, Later you'll find out things aren't so easy, and you'll find out the hard way like me. Harvey looked down at his legs. When his father said the hard way, Harvey thought, he meant the hard way. Slowly, as if his arms were broken instead of his legs, he began to eat his cereal.